Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kay. And today I am here to discuss Friday Night Live season four. Y'all, Friday nights really turned it up. They turned it up in season four. I'm not even gonna hold you. We got a new cast. Um, pretty much all the original people from Friday Night Lights are gone. Um, the only original people that are still left in season four are Riggins, Matt Saracen, and Julie. We have been introduced to new characters. We have been introduced to Bianca. We have been, oh, and I forgot Landry. And we have been introduced to Luke, um, as well as, um, Tinker. Um, we got somebody named Calvin Brown. Um, we got, you know, first of all, first of all, first of all. I feel like season one, season two, and season three of Friday Night Lights were good. But you can tell, like, with the writing, the storyline, there were some inconsistencies with the storylines. So, it seemed like every season, the characters would be doing something new. Well, at the end of season three, we, we saw that um, Eric Taylor was basically fired from the Dillon Panthers. And so, in order for him to still have a job, the district relocated him to East Dillon. Now, to me, the storytelling was a little bit inconsistent as far as the storyline with people going to East Dillon or East Dillon being a, a thing because um, <clears throat> in the beginning of the season four, they said that East Dillon was a school that was once open in the 80s, but it had been closed since then. So if they had been closed... And I know that there was a redistricting, a redistricting, redistricting between west, the west side of Dillon and the east side of Dillon. Um, they made it seem like the students had been going to school at East Dillon for years. Like East Dillon was always a thing, especially toward the end of season four. But in the beginning of season four, they said that East Dillon hadn't been a school since the eighties. I think nineteen eighty three was the last time they had even won a state championship. And so Dylan had been closed for a while. And they even made mention that um, the reason why there was such a divide between East Dillon and West Dillon was because of, um, in the beginning, East Dillon was where everybody lived at. But then once they started expanding, they started building up West Dillon and then East Dillon didn't get no more funding. So basically, East Dillon was the more urban part of Dillon. Which, you know, they didn't make Dylan look urban at all because they made, to me, Dylan was a real tumbleweed, cowboy-looking type town. At least that's how it was depicted to us the first three seasons. Like, I mean, it was giving, like, Dylan was, like, cattle, like, ranch, like, a farm town. Like, people lived on ranches and, you know, stuff like that. So, which some of the people did live on ranches, but... It was just so you know a little bit of a switch up because it gave us more like season four gave us more of the inner city part of Dylan versus you know it being like farm like like people like it was a rural area and so um season four started off with Michael B. Joy and running his character his name is Vince but he was running from the police and I was just like Sometimes I just wish that wasn't our storyline all the time when we, are being, when we are being introduced to a show. But, I mean, it is what it is. The show is old. I think season four took place around 2009, 2010. So, pretty much everybody, you know, Matt had, Matt was still living in Dillon. Um at the time he did end up leaving to go to Chicago but I think it went above my head that the reason why Matt didn't leave to go to college was so that he could stay with Julie I just want to say y'all if you are a fan of Friday Night Lights and you have watched it before did you feel like Julie was a brat I felt like from the beginning of time Julie was a brat like she always wanted to have her way first of all i was waiting on the, uh, the hair switch up for julie because julie's hair was given you get the best of both 
those words. She was giving Hannah Montana, but let me stay focused. Anyway, so I just feel like Julie was a brat and like she could never just like her parents weren't strict parents. I don't feel like they were strict parents. I just felt like they just needed solid communication and Julie just could never follow through. I know like she's a teenager and as teenagers, we kind of felt like a lot of things were pointless, but I'm just like, girl, if all I had to do was just have a conversation with my parents, bro, and you know, like majority of everything would be okay. Cause they didn't really give her too much responsibilities or nothing like that. They really just let Julie live her life. But cause Julie won't even work in that Applebee's no more. Like <laughs> I don't even know having her job. But anyway, I just feel like she was a brat. I felt like everybody's storylines pretty much from the original cast changed season after season, except for Tim Riggins. Tim Riggins was like the same from to me from season one all the way to season four. Um, I already told y'all there was three people in this series that I don't play about. Matt Saracen. I do not play about Matt. I do not play about Tim Riggins, and I do not play about Landry Clark. I'm going to just start with them three, even though I already started. But anyway, I think I'm going to handle Vince last. First of all, I think I finally figured out, it, it dawned on me, why Tim always, his heart... Like, Tim was not a bad guy. Like, he was not a troublemaker. He was just a person who was damaged. Like, and I know I know that he was damaged in, like, earlier seasons. But, like, it really dawned on me the reason why he never felt comfortable with living, with leaving Texas or dealing. He always had this saying called, Texas forever, Texas forever. And I feel like the only reason why he never felt comfortable growing was because that was the only consistent thing that he knew. Everything in his life was always changing. And I felt like that's another reason why he didn't want to leave Billy. Because Billy was his brother and Billy was the only consistent thing that he had his whole life. Billy never left him. His mom left him. His daddy left him. Jason Street ended up leaving him, even though, you know, like their relationship struggled when Jason became paralyzed. But as long as Jason wasn't dealing, you know, he that Jason was his best friend. He felt like he had somebody. But then, you know, the whole situation with Tyra in the beginning of season one, like him and Tyra was done. And then the one person who he really had like a heart for was Lila. But even Lila left Dylan. And so I think that's why he never felt comfortable. And so I think in season four, it dawned on him that he had to come up with a plan. He loved playing football. He was the state champion. You know, he was well known in the city. But, I mean, he was a state champion. Even Billy was a state champion because Billy went through the whole Dylan Panthers thing. But it's just the fact that, like, both him and, him and Billy struggled. They struggled so much. And um, that's why he, though, he drank. He would drink to get drunk, to numb the pain that he was feeling. And then I, I also feel like at the end of season four, before he went to jail, that's why he went back to, um, I can't remember the girl's name. But the girl, he, the, he, the mama he was staying with, he shared a daughter who went to East Dillon. He was just like, I need you to be my friend. I need you to be my friend. Because he didn't have anybody. He was like, my friends are like my family. And so that's that's just really how I felt. And so I was just like, dang, like, the only consistent thing in his life was his brother. And he, he it kind of reminded me of Spencer and, like, people, how he felt with, you know, Coach Baker and, you know, his dad, he just felt like people kept leaving him. And so that really, like, made me have even more compassion for Tim. You know, outside of the fact that I thought he was fine, but still. 
I was just like, he just, as a character, he just keep going through it. Another person who, 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 who sees a full, I mean, the writing was great, but let me tell you something. Season four tugged at your heartstrings, okay? So, at the, by the end of season four with Matt, one thing that I noticed Matt kind of went through the same thing. And I feel so bad for Matt because all the things that I was saying about his daddy in season in my season three review, everything came to fruition for season four. And so Matt Matt Daddy ended up transitioning to the afterlife. And when I seen them soldiers come to that door, I already knew what was happening. I was just like, oh my God, Matt has been through enough writers, please. The only consistent thing in Matt life right now is Julie. And I don't honestly, the only time when she ain't a brat is when she with Matt. <laughs> Bars. The only time she ain't a brat is when she with Matt. Sometimes she was a bear of Matt. I ain't even gonna hold you, but for the most part. Um, Matt never got to confront his father. Matt just went through a lot. Like, I'm glad that his mother stayed around because I was just like, season four, y'all can't bring Matt mama season three and then season four, Matt mama be gone. Matt has been through enough. Matt has been through enough. His grandma still, you know, she still wasn't in a home. You know, his his grandmother was suffering from dementia. And so, like I said in the beginning of my review, it didn't dawn on me that Matt stayed in Dylan because of Julie. I thought Matt just stayed in Dylan because he didn't want to leave his grandma. And he thought that going to school would be too far. So, he set up with going to Dylan Community or Dylan Tech. Or... Oh, excuse me. He settled with going to Dillon Tech or Dillon Community College, whichever one it was, he settled. And so, Julie, it was a constant thing that Julie asked Matt, did you stay because of me? Like, she would say, did you stay because of me? I don't want to be the one to hold you back. I don't want to be the one to hold you back. But then I'm like, girl, you told him to leave. So then when he left Dillon, she was pissed and she was crying. She was she was sad. She was moping. I understand that he left like, you know, without saying anything. I do understand that part. But it's just like you wanted him to leave. You felt like he said because of you. You was feeling guilty. But then when he actually left, like you or when he was about to leave, or when you thought he was leaving, you was like, Don't leave me, don't leave. I'm just like Julie. Which one is it, friend? You got to pick a side. Pick a side. Pick a side. I mean, like. And then, like, going back to Matt's father. So, of course, as you know, Matt's father was in Iraq. And Matt just. it. Oh, when he broke down, y'all. On the inside. I won't cry physically, but in my heart. I was crying for Matt because when he said, when he broke down to Coach Taylor and he told Coach Taylor that he hated his father. And then when he went to that funeral home and he looked at his father in that casket, the 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 uh, funeral director had told his father, I mean, the funeral director had told Matt that he, he think that it should remain closed because his father stepped on the, you know, and so, um, cause I don't think you can say that, you know, YouTube got certain things you can say, but his father stepped on something out there in Iraq and, you know, and so I feel like even though it was something traumatic for Matt to see like his, his father's body, I do feel like he needed that closure because it's just sometimes some people, some people can deal with not seeing something like that, but then some people just have to know. And I feel like he needed to know. He needed, because he said he wanted to see his father. So he said he, he he wanted to sit down, even with his father being deceased. He wanted to sit down 
and you know say everything's his fault because you know sometimes when a person transitions if a person didn't get to fully say what they needed to say to that person they will go to the funeral home sit down be with the body talk to the body have closure and then they they have their moments like that and so then by the time it's time for them to put the body commit the body to the ground or you know cremate the person you know they have made closure it was just sad to see and then when they got to the graveyard and then when them soldiers was folding up that um the flag giving it to Matt's grandma and when they was doing a 21 gun salute it was just sad it was good to see you know everybody come there to be supportive of matt um you know even lala came back from well i think it happened during the holiday time or fall break or something lala ended up coming home anyway but it was good to see lala there and um i know y'all seen when matt slammed the door in JD and his JD daddy face, rightfully so. I was like, <laughs> man, let, this ain't the time. I know you here for good, but after all that y'all did and you messed his his football situation up, Matt said hard pass. He good on y'all. Let me tell you somebody who was wreaking havoc. JD, after all of that compassion I had for you, JD. The way you came and wreaked havoc in season four, I was not here for that. And and then um, JD Daddy, Joe, that's the name Joe. Joe gonna tell Julie, oh, it's probably because of the split. We didn't even see JD Mama all of season four. Honestly, I was tired of looking at Joe. I was like, Joe, we don't care. You got, you got Eric fired. You done tanked the football program. Okay, the Dillon Panthers program was like end all be all in Dillon. Now you got a divide. Like it's a lot going on. We not here for you, Joe. We not. And Landry, I was happy for Landry. Landry ended up having to move schools. He ended up having to move schools. He had to go to East Dillon. He got redistricted. Um, as you know, Tyra went to. I think she went to um UT. They never really said. We just oh actually Tyra did get in. Ooh, excuse me. Tyra did get into UT. I forgot. Cause I the last I was about to say the last time I remember was her being on the wait list, but no, she did get a letter and she did go to UT. Um they did make mention of Tyra. Oh, you know, they made mention of Tyra as well as they made mention of Smash. So the characters of the past are still alluded to in season four. They just are not physically seen on camera. Um, but Landry, um, I think Landry was playing defense when he was in, I don't know nothing about football now. So if I ain't got to correct y'all, just let me know down in the comments. But um, Landry was playing defense, I think, at Dillon. But then we came to East Dillon. Coach wanted him to be on special teams, and he was a kicker. He was the um, the field goal kicker. You know, I went. Is it called a punter? I don't know. Anyway, so Landry, as sweet as he is, Landry liked Bianca. First of all, he ran over Bianca bike. That's how they met. But Landry is just such a sweet guy. And it's sad because they always make him look like the loser on every season. And I be feeling so bad because I'm just like, Landry is such a good guy. But he be taking L's. Like, he is so smart. He is talented. He writes songs. He in a band. He he got he got good SAT scores. Like, you know, he he's a good friend. He's supportive both to men and to women. But then when it comes to, like, the love department, he just be taking L's like every single time. And then he always liked the girls who give him a chance, but then they end up breaking his heart. Like Bianca ended up, I think her name Bianca, he, Bianca ended up breaking his heart. Speaking of Bianca, I know y'all seen Bianca daddy was Charles from Diary of Mad Black Woman. Charles, I'm going to tell you what. 
because of this storyline at East Dillon with you and your past football career, I have been feeling redemption for you. Even though I'm still not over you cheating on Helen with Christina. Or was Christina the maid? Whatever her name was. And Helen had every right to push you in that, in that tub and tell you to stop blowing those bubbles and to eat that salad in front of you while you was hungry. But since you are a father who has a small black business selling smoked turkey, brisket, ribs and stuff, and you working hard for your family, I'm going to cut you some slack. So Bianca, I think her name was Bianca. I hope I let me see. Am I making am I making that up? I think her name was Bianca. Come on, Lamarcus Tinker. That's funny. What is Jeremy's name? Her name won't be Bianca. It was Jess. I'm sorry. It was Jess Merriweather. Why well, I thought that girl name was Bianca. Who name is Bianca? I've been calling her Bianca this whole time. Anyway. So. Bianca. I mean, Jess. <laughs> Jess was with Landry. And she liked Landry. But y'all never, y'all never said in season four what was the history between Jess and Vince. Like, we could tell that something was there because even his mama knew her. And I was just like, what's the tea? We don't know the background. Did y'all did they date before? Or did was I not paying attention? Did I miss it? I don't feel like I missed nothing. But I'm just like, what's the, because it's tension between them. What's going on? And so, Jess was like, really supportive of her father. I don't know where her mother at. You know what? And something about this show, something about this show is against mamas. And all American, it was the daddies. But on this show, it's the mamas. I don't know. I just feel like everybody got deadbeat mama. But anyway... Um, she's helping her father raise her three younger brothers. They play Pop Warner. They back and forth. Vince is in the street. And I felt bad for Vince because Vince kind of lived in the hood. I think Tinker lived in the hood. Um, but Vince was caught up in the street lifestyle. And then, you know, I think his PO gave him the coach, Eric, basically to help him get his get his life together because Vince was on his last strike. And so the little boy in the beginning of the season who had the cornrows who was giving Coach Taylor a hard time ended up being one of Vince's best friends. But well, Vince said that he had seen a couple of his friends be taken out of here, you know, because of the lifestyle they was living. Vince Bomber was on that street candy real hard. I mean, to the point where she almost OD'd and Vince had to take her had to get the paramedic to come get her up off the couch because she was not responsive. And so I just felt so bad for Vince because I'm just like, Lord, Vince is a product of his environment. You know what I'm saying? He even started trying to do good. He had got a job at the rib shack, you know, cleaning up. He just needed some money to put some groceries, keep the lights on because at one point the lights and the water had got cut off. And then, you know, it was the redemption that he he had when Coach Taylor trusted him and he trusted Coach Taylor. And, you know, like he was trying to do good. He had got, you, you know, he became quarterback. You know, it was a situation with him and Luke. You know, it was just a whole lot of stuff going on. And then, like, 
I was my I was just so hurt for Vince. And then when his friend got taken, he went with some other dude from the street gang. And he decided last minute he didn't want to go through it, you know, trying to get revenge. The dude pistol whipped him and told me he was going to get him. And I was just like, Lord, we can't have Vince getting pum pum that, you know what I'm saying? Because he decided he can, he don't want to be in the street no more. That man gave him $4,000 to keep his mama, to pay his mama dues at the rehab place. Hopefully in season five, his mama can stay clean because Vince been through enough. And then it was just going to Landry saying that she got feelings for Vince. So obviously in season five, Jess and Vince are going to be together. Vince was doing good though. They ended up being Dylan. That was the big thing of season four too. East Dylan, being Dylan, they, had a, they called it the Battle of the Wildcat or the Battle of the Big Cat, something like that. Another thing that kind of ruined me this season was the whole storyline with um, Principal Taylor. Principal Taylor just gave that girl good advice. They gave that girl good advice. You know, she didn't tell her to take her baby to the, um, you know, to get terminated. She told her, you know, there's a place that you can go if you want to get care. And if this is your, because the girl asked her about, you know, terminating the pregnancy. And Julie told her where to go. But then Luke Mama, you know, did the most and was trying to get Lady fired. The, first of all, the girl Mama told her she was not keeping that child no way. She was going to take her daughter to terminate her situation anyway. But it's just the fact that I like the way that Luke handled it. Luke was so nice and caring with Becky. That's her name. Why couldn't I remember her name when I was trying to talk about her and Tim? Her name is Becky. Luke was so nice with Becky. And, you know, he was willing to take responsibility for what he did. But in the beginning, Becky never wanted it anyway. She told him that she needed the other half of the money so she can go and terminate it. Because she didn't want to be like her mom. So, why that never came up to Luke's mom, I don't know. But somehow Luke's mom pinned it on Principal Taylor. And so, she ended up getting placed on administrative leave, which I thought was totally unfair. What else happened? They ousted Buddy Garrity. Let me tell you something. I don't see it for Buddy Garrity. I don't trust him. Dylan ousted Buddy Garrity because Luke was they, one of their star players. And basically, um, Luke was lying about where he was staying at so he can go to Dylan in the first place. But then when they found out about, you know, somebody telling, they assumed it was Buddy Garrity, which it was. But it's just a simple fact that, like, you know, Buddy kept taking L's. Buddy was doing too much anyway. Buddy, I ain't give a butt, period. Let me just say that. I ain't give a butt. One thing that I did, you know, I thought that Friday Night Lights did very well is the discussion of issues. When it comes down to discussion of issue, like, um... Even with Coach Taylor being white and Vince being black, um, Coach Taylor was exposed to a different side of life with his black players. And that's a dynamic that we didn't get in the first couple of seasons with Smash, even though that whole racist situation went down with Smash and Coach um Mac and then smash in the situation with that guy and 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 smash his sister. Um, how can I word it? Like, for example, Luke and and Luke and Vince got into it, and they both ended up getting arrested. That would have been Vince's last strike because Coach Taylor knew this. And because Coach Taylor knew that Vince didn't have the same opportunity or would have been given the same chances as Luke in that situation, even though they both got arrested, 
coach went in there and set both of them straight, first of all. Told Luke that he was going to take the blame for it because he knew if Luke would have took the blame, they would have just gave Luke a pat on the wrist. Now, if Vince would have went in there and said that, his whole life would have changed. And Coach knew this. And so, it was a good teaching lesson with them two. One, to show them because they are teammates, they need to have each other's back. Number two, it showed the difference between how people of different races are treated in, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And it was a recurring like lesson, but it wasn't like the the storyline was the same. For let me let me let me just compare it a little bit. You know when All American when that whole situation with the um the article and the coaches knowing about the players tackling or playing dirty or whatever like that. That went on for like 10 episodes. Friday Night Lights wrapped that, wrapped that up in one episode. And most times when something goes on, they wrap it up in one episode. It might span two episodes, but it's not going past that. So it's the way the writing was and the storytelling of it all went because they didn't harp on it we understood that there was a point to be made and we we understood that and by we i mean the audience we understood that there was a lesson to be told and that they were trying to bring awareness to something but it's just a simple fact that like it wasn't harped on you know it helped it was just a stepping stone in the story to help build on build on to a bigger plot you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like we stayed there and we kept getting hammered with it and hammered with it and hammered with it. I didn't, At least I didn't feel that way when watching the story play out. Because even the whole situation with um, them being in a... Them, the two worlds being different even came back up with the funding of getting the park done. And then the pep rally. And then... Um, you know, even with Vince having his com his slick comments with Landry, you know what I'm saying? It it came back up, and so even though they knew that they were different, they knew that they were still together. It wasn't given like how it was in the beginning seasons when it was just Dylan, you know, Dylan Panther. Um, I hope I hope that I hope that made sense. I tried to explain it the best way I could. Sorry, y'all, if I got a lash in my eye. But I feel like, you know, everything was great. From the whole thing with Matt and Julie, Coach Taylor and Miss Taylor, you know, Tim, Becky, and Becky Mama, even though Becky Mama, I feel like Becky Mama was trifling. Um, you know, Mindy and Billy. Vince, you know, his friends, his situation with the streets, Tinker. You know, Tinker was a good friend. Tinker was a good friend to Luke. And he had Luke back. And that was beautiful because we didn't get to see that kind of a friendship in the beginning, like in the first couple of seasons. Um, I was glad to see Matt and Tim hang out more this season. Um... I was glad to see Matt actually, you know, open up more because he seemed kind of closed off. Um, he did that. Whoever that was, I can't know. I don't know the dude's name who's playing Matt's character, but he did a really good job with Matt's character and the way he acted, even with grief and just, you know, being soft spoken and, you know, being patient. I wish they would have found a football storyline for him. I wish he would have been able to live out his dream because he really liked playing quarterback. The only switch up they did with him was the whole art thing. And I felt like that kind of came out of nowhere a little bit because that wasn't something that he was doing the first two seasons, unless I just don't remember that part, which that could be possible. Um, but yeah, y'all, I think that's all I have for season four. We got one more season. Um, season three had 13 episodes. Season four had 13 episodes. And I think season five might have 10. So we'll see. But stay tuned. Um, 
I'm getting a little sad because the show is almost over. Um, this show is really good. I don't know if I could watch it back through again, though, because it's just so much that happens. Like, it's loaded. It literally is like the football version of Degrassi. <laughs> um, but, yeah, y'all, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I hope y'all have been enjoying my reviews of Friday Night Lights. Oh, yeah, I do want to say um, congratulations to the writers for sealing the deal on y'all's deal. Um, I'm happy for y'all. And I'm glad that y'all are finally getting what y'all deserve. Y'all work hard. I don't want y'all's work to go under the radar. I don't want you guys to feel like your jobs were taken for granted. Um, because it's hard to have a passion for art, especially, and to be able to create a story and then see your story displayed out on screen and for, you know, for viewer consumption. You know, I think we always... You, you know, take for granted the writers, the people who are behind the scenes, because it takes a lot. It takes more than just the actors to make the production go. So I'm glad I have for y'all. Hopefully, Sac Africa could get, you know, them a fair deal, and then we all can move forward, and we can have a good TV. But until then, I want y'all to rest. You know, recuperate because 150 days is a long time to be protesting for something. But Y'all endured, y'all got through it, and y'all deserve it. Congratulations. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll be back with more videos. Deuces.